hello traders welcome to our course for today we are on bbp's course for middle school and we are going to discuss about grade six today which talks about oscillators so in grade six we are going to learn the difference between leading and lagging indicators how to use oscillators to warn you of the end of a trend how to use the macd to confirm a trend and we summarize grade six so i hope you're ready because i'm ready and to begin let's roll the intro <laughs> So welcome back here we are inside of grade 6 oscillators and momentum indicators so let's go with the first one leading versus lagging indicators so basically leading indicators gives you a signal before a new trend or reversal occurs they help you to determine if a market or a market is oversold or overbought so they help you to know at what level you are or the market is trading at presently so that's what leading indicators do okay whereas lagging indicators on the other hand they basically gives you a signal after a trend has started they just inform you so when you see the signal you know a new trend has started okay however leading indicators tells you before a trend i mean where what level you are or the market has traded okay what level if the market is oversold or overbought in it tells you that and then lagging on indicators on the other hand tells you when a trend okay has started okay so that's the difference between leading indicators and lagging indicators also you often understand that they don't warn you of any upcoming changes in prices they don't warn you if price is going to change or not or going to continue just the way it is they simply tell you what prices are doing either rising or falling okay so that's what leading indicators and lagging indicators are so something else you need to keep in mind is that leading indicators because they determine when the market is oversold or oversold or overbought they tend to give you know uh, inaccurate signals many of the times in fact bbp says leading indicators mislead you so you have to be very careful while using leading indicators okay however on the other hand lagging indicators which tells us if you uh, price of the market has changed what trend will if a trend has already commenced only gives the signals after the price change is clearly forming a trend okay so is the downside that you'll be a little bit late in entering a position if you are using the lagging indicators because the trend will have commenced before you see the sign get the signal however for leading is super fast however it might give you a wrong signal as well so for the purpose of this course, uh, many people say they are going to categorize all the technical indicators into two categories and one is leading indicators or oscillators and the other is lagging or trend following indicators. Okay, so that will be all we'll consider for this section. In fact, that's all. Yeah, let's just read here. Leading indicators perform best in sideways or ranging market okay so let's move ahead okay let's just read this it says the general approach is that you should use lagging indicators during trending trending markets and leading indicators during sideways market i hope you understand that so what it is basically saying that uh, you should use lagging indicators during a trending market so if the market is trending say to the downside you should use a lagging indicators that will move something like this okay however if the market is ranging okay say bouncing off the roof and sitting uh, roof and floor rather you use what to use a lagging uh, use a leading indicators rather then for a trending market you use a lagging indicators because of trend has already formed all right without further ado let's move on to the next section that says how to use oscillators to warn you of the end of it so how to use oscillators to warn you of the end of a trend this is what an oscillator looks like a squiggle lines you know dropping off between one point and another point so this is an oscillator and this is how our 
uh, leading indicators okay the the move between one point and another and now now so suppose you are in a trade and you know that the market has been trending to the upside and this is the oscillator margin okay now it has been trending to the top side once once it's get to this uh level here right depending on the indicator you are using the indi indicator tells you the oscillator rather which you are using the leading one tells you <coughs> the market is either oversold okay yeah and if the market is coming down price are coming down to this level right here right the oscillator informs you tells you when you look at the chart and i mean your indicator and its prices are here the oscillator is here is it it's definitely tell you the prices have been oversold right in this case overbought in this case oversold so this is how basically you use your uh, oscillators which is the leading indicators for the williams uh, percentage range the stochastic parabolic and the relative strength index they are all oscillators they work under the premise that as momentum begins to slow fewer buyers if it's an uptrend or fewer sellers if it's in a downtrend are willing to trade at the current price okay so when prices are up here right when prices are up here you know it is oversold right buyers they are willing they are not willing to buy prices are high, higher more than this level right here okay now if it is here you know that sellers have been pushing the prices down and you know sellers are not willing to sell the price more than this level okay why because buyers are going to step in here and push prices back up so this is how you basically use the leading indicators now look at the examples we have here on your screen from bbps this is the parabolic sa arrow now when you combine more than one indicators it can work in your favor okay so but that doesn't mean it's still going to be perfect when you combine more than one indicator now look at the chart we have the parabolic sa arrow uh, sorry the uh, stochastic and we have the relative strength index now if you look here we also have the parabolic i mean this is three in one this is the parabolic this the dotted lines you have here, here. and uh, this is the uh, stochastic and this is the relative strength index now we know what they all do okay so see, let's see if we can see how they work in our favor now the parabolic here is signaling the buy to the upside and here it's now signaling itself to the downside and that is all we see happening and the parabolic right confirms uh what the stochastic also said okay if you look at the stochastic you see the blue line crossing below the red line and that signals buy okay and if you look at the rosi uh, it is uh just it is in the oversold uh region level or area in the market and when it's in the oversold you know what will happen buyers will step into the market and they will buy so for you to have you know the odds in your favor you should combine uh one or two indicators uh for your on your chart now mind you this is a daily time frame chart not five minutes not one hour not four hour okay so that's how you can combine it to get you know the better uh, odds in your favor of of, of uh, uh, trend direction or how you, whatever you want to call it okay or reverse in the market now if you combine this is also uh, okay good another example you see uh, earlier on here this sh this chart in the indicators gave us a good direction okay buy 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 buyers okay and sell 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 buyers look at it very well it gave us correct indication i mean of direction of the market but now look at this uh, price chart over here let me zoom this one bigger you see that it was <laughs> this is funny <laughs> you see that it's like oh my god you tell me it's buy it's sell, and now it's not buying oh my goodness no so let's just discuss you see that right here the parabolic sa arrow okay is signaling a cell and right here the uh, stochastic on the other hand is signaling a buy because the red line is just below the is below the blue line okay and that signals a, a buy okay and you see in this area right here it is very very wrong the signal we have is wrong and now if you look at the rosi is signaling 
in fact this is no signal at all okay because it's in the middle of nowhere this is our highs and this is our low now it is middle of nowhere so if you had based your decisions off of this uh indicators alone like this guy screaming here like what that's how you'll be screaming because the indicators they lag and they, they don't honestly 100 percent of the time they don't give you correct uh, direction or signals that's what we're learning okay so you cannot base your decisions off of the indicators alone while trading however you can use them to your to your advantage so why why being aware of why a leading indicator may be wrong there's no way to avoid them exactly if you are getting mixed signals you are better off doing nothing than take a best guess if a shot doesn't meet all your criteria, don't force the trade, move on. So let's move on to see how we can use the MACD to confirm a trend. How to use a MACD to confirm? The MACD, on the other hand, we can use it to confirm our trend. And it's less likely to give you errors when MACD is very good at, you know, determining or giving you a trend. So how do we uh, configure the MACD? We did that earlier on. So here, let's look at uh, Baby Peeps uh, chart. This is the daily chart of the GU. Okay, uh, so they they put the 20 EMA. This is for the configuration for both the 20 EMA and uh, the 10 EMA. Okay, so the 10 EMA is the blue line, and the 20 EMA is the red line. Now when the em the 10 ema cross above the 20 ema which is the blue crosses above that's a bullish cross over right so so let's go back to the chart and look very well the 10 ema and the 20 ema are right here before us so the 20 ema is the red line the 10 ema is the blue line now when the 10 uh EMA, the exponential moving average crossed above the red line. So you can see here, right? Prices rose up as well. Now, when the blue line, the 10 EMA, you know, crossed below the 20 EMA, which is the red line, right? You see price falling down. And when the, again, the blue line crosses above, I mean, uh, below right here. There is another a shorting of the market prices went down so we can see with this way we, we can see that the uh the what is the name again oh my goodness <laughs> the macd yeah the macd uh, is almost accurate when giving us uh the trend when determining the trend for us so and if you also look down to the indicator terminal you can see that the cross is here they are also they, they are in sync with the crosses here as well so everything lines up correctly for this one however that doesn't mean that the macd is perfect let's look at another example okay where yeah, the macd you know was also very wrong now look at it uh the indicator terminal here you see that the macd crossed for buy the blue line which is the 10 ema is above crossed above right here however on the trade on the charts you see no significant uh buys are here in fact it's just a ranging market up down up down okay so that tells you that you still cannot solely rely on the macd 100 percent look at another example here right here in the indicator terminal the macd crossed for buy the blue line is above and what do we see here okay uh indecision candle okay indecision candle that's a doji okay so that's just that for you you just have to know that indicators they are not perfect they will not be perfect 100 of the time but you can use them as well like macd to determine a trade so just know that these errors here okay they are called fake out so they they, they are not 100 percent reliable so let's move on to uh the summary part so what have we learned so far in this grade six we have learned that leading and lagging indicators they can be classified into two parts the leading indicator they are also called oscillators which give signal before the trend or a reversal occurs however a lagging indicator on the other hand 
is a trend following indicator that gives us a signal after the trend has already started okay and you remember your leading indicators they are the oscillators the rosi the uh, williams range percentage the parabolic the and the, and the likes and the other ones we have right why the lagging indicators the uh the macd which is it's just macd right so it only comes up and it tells us when the trend has already started okay so basically this is what this level uh grade six is all about and they all have their advantages and disadvantages they fake out they are not 100 percent reliable we discussed that uh, uh the other time uh, however when you also combine them you can have the odds in your favor okay but just know even though when you combine them like we discussed earlier and we saw you cannot 100 percent rely on all these indicators but you can use them to your advantage i personally for myself i don't i don't use indicators okay but we are studying this is what we are learning you just have to know about them so let's move on to the other part of our uh class which is the grade six grade seven rather so guys if you like this video so far please uh, smash the like button subscribe and until next time take care